Oh, hi everyone. I will start with sharing my screen. Um, thanks Isabel for sharing the agenda. So yeah, hi, uh, Cosmos Hub Dev Calls. So as a reminder, please add stuff if you want to discuss at the bottom of the agenda here. Already added one point about the asteroid protocol and IAV15. We'll discuss that about later. Before that, we'll go first over uh, some updates from what our team at Informal, so the hub team at Informal did in the last uh, two weeks and also afterwards what Haifa worked on over the past two weeks. So, um, yeah, one of the major thing is uh, Gaia V15. Uh, Isabel, can you check if the other people want to join? Let me know, I don't. Okay, I will let you know. There's nobody. Okay. So, um, yeah, we worked on the V15. This is probably the, one of the main, uh, a very important upgrade for us. We worked on it for a while. So the release candidate is out. Uh, is actually RC2 that, uh, and we update the testnet to it. Um, probably, like I will say more about this later. Um, the difference between RC2 and RC1 is the late, uh, we basically updated to the latest version of SDK. SDK released a new point release for 47 and it had uh, a fix in it. Uh, I don't think it's a critical thing since it's published. But uh, since we didn't have the final version anyway, we decided to add it to V15, just to be on the safe side. So the testnets are upgraded already to RC1 for sure. To RC2, I think they'll be upgraded to the end tomorrow. But again, Lex, I will say more on that. Um, also, the proposal uh, is on the Hub Forum. So there is a link here if you want to go and uh, ask questions, comment, share your opinion about it. And uh, yeah, the next step is to submit the proposal on the hub and we expect to do that by the end of the week. Unless, so of course this is pending also on the discussion that we'll have uh, afterwards with uh, regarding us, right? So if, uh, if there are some issues there that require us to delay the release, we'll see. Uh, also an important thing, we updated the docs or we believe that we updated the docs properly regarding the 47 upgrade. If you do find any, if you do find any discrepancies or things that are missing, please let us know. Yes, so it will be very useful. Um, yeah, any questions regarding V15 besides the discussion that we'll have it later? Let's uh, let's move on. Um, the next thing is the work on partial set security. So we are con uh, we continue working on the implementation. Uh, again, you can track the work in the by just going to on GitHub. We have an epic there, and uh, yeah, you can check here what we are working on. Um, at the moment, what's a work in progress is the the reward distribution implementation. Actually, I think we just merged this. And uh, basically how we decided to go about reward distribution is to, uh, to implement it as an IBC middleware. So basically we need to get information from the, uh, from the transfer module. So from an IBC transfer to understand from what consumer chain that comes so that we can decide which validators to reward. Because again, in partial set security, each chain, each consumer chain will have a subset of the validator set. So it's customized. Also, we are working on, um, on computing the partial validator sets, right? So again, unlike before, it will not be the entire validator set on the hub, be sent so uh, be sent to all the consumer chains, but only partial sub, uh, subsets. Um, so uh, we need to we need to we are working on implemented that logic. 
Uh, another thing that we did is integrate the uh, integrate PSS in the MBT in the model based testing, right? So from the previous uh, in the previous update, we discussed how we added partial set security to Quint to the Quint model, and now we extended that to we basically added the driver and uh, uh, we we added the drive uh, the driver and we integrated with MBT. So again, the work can be seen here. Uh, Marius, um, yes. Before you move on from this point, for people who might be listening for the first time, can you quickly ex explain what Quint is and why that's important for us to have added it? Yes. So uh, Quint is a uh, is a way to. It's a language that uh, basically is meant for engineers. To write uh, to uh, to model a, a protocol in uh, TLA plus, right? So instead of using TLA plus, which is very difficult for engineers to work uh, to use, Queen basically translates in the end in TLA plus and can be run. You can run a model checker on it and all of these things, but uh, it's really easy for engineers to use. It looks very similar to Scala, so. In the end, what it is, is just a programming language that enables you to model a uh, protocol. And this is what we want to do. Uh, unlike the implementation, we are uh, not focusing on all the details, right? So we are simplifying a lot. Uh, so it enables us to figure out if the design is correct using certain invariants, so if the uh, invariants are broken and stuff like this, but also we use it to generate traces that then afterwards we feed, we through a driver, we feed to the implementation, right? So basically we generate tests, automatic tests. And this is where its power really comes from, right? So this is what we want to enable in uh, interchange security. And uh, yeah, so to model the entire interchange security protocol, uh, using uh, uh, using Quint and uh, then to generate tests. We'll see here as another update that we we are working on uh, on adding slashing to the Quint model. So we already have from previous updates we were saying that we kept adding different parts of the interchange security protocol to Quint. Uh, we have there pretty much everything now, but for slashing and of course PSS is a new thing, so we we added that as well. Um, sure. Thanks for uh, reminding me. That's a good point. Um, we start working on also on ICS epochs. So on the implementation, we already have an ADR. Uh, the issue here is that at the moment, interchange security requires uh, almost a VSC packet per block, which so it's a lot of relaying communication. Uh, so a lot of IBC packets. Um, this is an issue for some consumer for the consumer chain, so we want to add epochs, which basically what it means, let's say that you have epochs that are every 1,000 blocks or something like that, you will send a VAC packet, so a packet with an IBC packet with validator updates only once every 1,000 blocks. So clearly reducing the, the communication cost. Um, also working on uh, enabling multiple application mega blocks. This is uh, we it's still in the spike phase. Uh, we are trying now to enable. So we are enabling multiple test applications and uh, multiplexing messages to these applications. Um, another thing is uh, working towards towards the next Gaia or SDK upgrading Gaia, so that's SDK 50. It's not something that we have a plan when exactly that release is gonna happen, but we know what we need for it. And an important part is LSM, the LSM upgrade to SDK 050. So we start working on that. Uh, we have already a branch and uh, we do expect that uh, we'll have, uh, we'll finalize this work in one or two weeks, something like that. Um, also, another thing regarding Gaia, we start working on integrations, a series of integrations. So we always said that V15 is an upgrade of SDK, while, uh, so we upgrade to SDK 047, and afterwards, this will enable a bunch of, in, a bunch of new features that were not possible before. 
So some of these are the skip block SDK, uh, the ICA controller, IBC rate limiter. So the ICA is controller to enable applications like TimeWave to so it will enable new applications on TimeWave. So something what we are focusing on at the moment is to have the community pool participate on uh, in voting on Neutron. Uh, IBC rate limiter, we want to set limits on IBC channels with Atom on them. So in case the hub is attacked or a bridge, one of the IBC channels is attacked, you cannot really do, you cannot really run away with funds or it's a limit on how much loss of funds can happen. So that's worst case scenarios. Um, then the IBC fee middleware, which at the beginning will enable it, but at the beginning will not do much since we do not have channel upgradability. That will come once we upgrade to IC, to SDK 050 because we do require IBC 8 and that's connected to SDK 50. Uh, still, new channels will be able to be created with fee incentivization on them for relayers, of course. So like relayer incentivization, so the fee middleware. Uh, and the lastly, they are ICS epochs that we we said the, I said before that we are working on. Um, two more uh, things: uh, we updated the platform for the Gaia Docs. Uh, now it's on uh, Docusaurus. Uh, you can have the link here, and we are currently working on adding versioning for both Gaia and ICS. And last, in case you missed it, to uh, sin. Like one week ago, we posted the forum. Uh, on the forum, we posted the uh, a blog post about Babylon and uh, the project that we are doing with them to bring uh, Bitcoin security on the hub, right? So basically, the Cosmos hub will be secured by Bitcoin. Uh, this is really exciting. So please go on the forum. There is a link here. Uh, check it out and uh, yeah, give us feedback, comments. All of these things. Any questions? If not, I will pass it to you, Lexa. Sounds good. Hey, uh, do you think we should address the asteroids thing first, or? Uh, I will about let's it after. Do, let's do the update first. Uh, okay. And then we can address it. Should be pretty straightforward for us. So right now, Theta, the release testnet, and the provider uh, testnet are both on RC1. We did our RC1 upgrade today on provider, and we pulled our validators. So we'll be moving both of them to RC2 tomorrow, assuming that we uh, pass all of our local testing on it. Today, we did uh, a game day and change log review for v15 which was really productive we walked validators through many of the changes that are going to be relevant to them uh, we looked at the minimum deposit amount and ratio we looked at the spam vote uh, prevention mechanism in which wallets now need one atom staked in order to send vote messages and then we walked through a whole bunch of param change proposals um, gaia specific params like uh, the global fee things can be changed without listing all of the params in the module when you submit the proposal. But uh, parameters that are SDK params, like in the staking module, you have to uh, list all of the params in that module and their appropriate value when you submit the proposal. We'd highlighted that this is a risk for validators and voters because someone could put up a proposal and say that it only changes one param, but try to sneak in another. So we were trying to raise awareness that from now on, uh, as long as we're on this uh, version of the SDK, I don't actually know how future versions change it, but validators do need to actually be checking every param um, in that module when a param change proposal is put up on the hub. We demonstrated how to uh, sneak one in there and how you would go through checking it. And uh, that's just a little governance change that people need to be aware of. It's something that um, like token holders should be aware of too. So um, I think the next time we see a param change on the hub, um, we'll just have to look at that and then publicize it a bit more. 
We also looked at some demo items that we didn't have people walk through, but we raised some awareness about the multi-send command, which is a huge boon for everyone doing um, like multi-sig work. Um, really great for us in the testnet incentives program, because now we could do a multi-send with a wallet sending the same amount to many addresses in one TX instead of doing like 30 transactions. Uh, there's also a query to check vesting accounts now, which we showed people and validators are still talking about this stuff in the replicated security testnet channel. Um, we're getting feedback as usual about time zones in our testnet Wednesday slot, which is sort of mainnet relevant as well, since we tend to use the same slot. I think uh, later in the year, we'll do a signaling prop on the testnet to see how people feel about switching up our time slot, and then that information will be relevant to mainnet as well. Uh, just good information for people to have. And finally, we've been thinking about doing a partial set security incentivized testnet, similar to Game of Chains, uh, eventually when it's ready to walk through some of the major changes and uh, experiment with validators getting used to what it looks like to onboard new chains and to have chains switch from uh, replicated security to partial set security. Um yeah, I mean, I think um, we should we should try to do that as soon as possible. I think we yeah. we we're intending to have something that was going to work halfway uh, by the end mm -hmm. of the quarter. Um, you know, no guarantees, but even if we have something that's seriously lacking, maybe we should get it into a test net um, as early mm -hmm. as possible. I guess we can talk more about that offline. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I do have a question regarding the game day with V fifteen. Any mm -hmm. interesting finds? like concerns regarding things that validators are really struggling with or things that we should be more aware, maybe communicate more? Uh, I think the the stuff about the param changes was a, not, not necessarily a surprise, but uh, people were concerned that it wasn't, the reasoning behind it wasn't clearly communicated. Um, but, you know, it's an SDK change. It's not it's not something that the hub team decided to change. Um, scrolling through Discord. Some feedback about how uh, changes to governance, essentially, that like this param change, are putting more work on uh, validators and voters for having to really dig into each proposal and investigate it, as opposed to being able to just trust that the tooling being used like uh like wallet apps or integrator tools are just like displaying the right information they have to go looking for it now that's um, kind of something that wallets need to fix right i mean yeah it seems I, like I agree to just show everything when you're looking at it i i agree and some of the validators have said they've submitted issues to ping pub and maybe to mint scan i'm not sure to do things like display the old value of the param beside the, the new proposed value, like it would make it much easier to check that things are being changed appropriately. Interesting. Uh, yeah, hopefully in future, uh, in future calls, dev calls, we can get more, uh, uh, more representative from wallets, because I do believe that, especially with PSS, coming and also the changes in uh, SDK, like major changes, upgrades of SDK, it's important to to have this communication, right? And to yeah. see exactly how upgrading uh, to V15, for example, will affect wallets. Um, yeah. Yeah, I cool. think it's a bit of a gap in our, our workflow, being able to to prepare with with tooling and integrating providers. Uh, I remember that with replicated security as well, that there were changes that needed to happen in the wallets and the block explorers, and they, they lagged behind a bit. It's also a major upgrade. The The hub is on V45 for the last two years or so. Yeah. Or more. Uh, so it's it's a big jump, right? So yeah. we'll from now on to have to not skip versions of SDK and hopefully we'll be will not have to wait another two years for the next SDK upgrade. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Cool. Any other questions? If not, I would like to jump into this discussion about uh, a survey protocol and uh, V15. So who wants to, to share some context on that? I think either Jahan or Tomas, if you would like to. Yeah, I, I can read. I don't completely understand it. I, I just received the details from Redphone this morning. Um, uh, so I can read that off. Uh, if, but if Tomas is here, um, then, um, you know, maybe he'd be better. I'm not sure. Uh, Tomas, would you like to share uh, a little bit of context on, on the uh, issue? If you're talking, you are muted. Uh, if not, I can. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, just, I'll just be reading it off a Telegram message. So um, yeah. Okay, I will start then uh, in that case here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let me see here. So says, uh, the latest version of Gaia slash Cosmos Hub updates to Cosmos SDK 47, and that impacts the non-critical extension options, NCXO, part of a transaction body, which Asteroids relies on. Specifically, the NCXO is getting validated when it should be ignored per the spec. Proposed solutions. One, add native support for inscriptions slash arbitrary data to Cosmos Hub. Our current solution is based on adding inscription data into non-critical extension options, which worked originally and should work per the spec, but might not work in the future as has happened with this Cosmos SDK version. We believe it would be beneficial to add native support for adding arbitrary data. A concrete solution is TBD and mostly based on discussing what would be most viable, palatable for Cosmos Hub to implement. Two potential solutions could be, one, adopting an asteroid specific protoduff message that is not validated. Two, adding support for a more general generic method of publishing data on Cosmos Hub. Two, fix the second solution. Fix non-critical extension options. Handle non-critical extension options when there is an implementation implement when there is an implementation for tx.tx extension optional and ignore it otherwise. Um, the breaking change was introduced in is a pull request link here. I'll, I'll paste this. Uh, I'll paste this in our. Uh, maybe I can actually copy the whole message and paste it in the chat right here. People, I'll paste it in, in our in our informal Slack too. But. Um, it was introduced in pull request. Uh, it's you know eleven thousand four hundred thirteen on the Cosmos SDK. It used to be ignored, but with this change, transaction fails on no registered implementations of type tx dot tx extension optional error, since there is no implementation for it in Gaia. Um, we believe this is a bug in Cosmos SDK and should just be ignored when not handled as stated here. Um, and I think there's links to the to the spec maybe here. Um, and he's linking to all kinds of different stuff of here's the PR before it was ignored and after it was ignored and stuff. So um, I, I guess uh, I don't know if you guys, um, oh, it sounds like Tomas uh, is having a mic issue. So I guess that it seems like to me, it sounds like and I'm pasting, hold on, I'm going to paste the, the, the text here in the chat. So maybe somebody can copy it into our, our document as well. But um, yeah, so basically it sounds like, um, it should be pretty easy to fix with this PR on the Cosmos SDK. Um, I do like maybe Redphone, like we could talk later about what the options are for making, uh, what the benefits would be of, of kind of having more special purpose stuff built for Asteroids. Um, I'm very happy to support Asteroids protocol. I think it's great. You guys are building on the hub. Um, but it seems like the quick solution, what it sounds like to me, the quick solution for now would just be to make Cosmos SDK work the way it did before. Um, and so it sounds like Asteroids should be able to do uh, like a one line PR um, on uh, Cosmos SDK. And um, we have our own fork of Cosmos SDK actually. And we can um, we can just pull that PR in uh, and, and get it into a newer version of, of Gaia. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and then I guess uh, it could also hopefully be upstreamed to mainline Cosmos SDK. Um, yeah, that's my, that's what it sounds like to me, like what's going on now. So yeah. Um, uh, unless there's some reason, like the only w way this could go wrong is there's some reason in Cosmos SDK where things work differently now, where having this field is now some kind of a DOS risk or something that it wasn't before. Uh
So I I need to go into that because the first time I'm uh, I'm looking at this description here, right? So I have to. So I guess we'll we'll look into the uh, the fix more. Looking, um, which I think unfortunately will probably delay. I mean, so. Um, I also just want to say uh, maybe we should get together as well and figure out how to uh, how to get um, how to get asteroid tests into our testing workflow. Uh, you know, at least for IFAS tests. Uh, you know, figure out where the best place to put that is, but have something where we can just verify that whatever asteroids is using works because um, we wouldn't want to break asteroids. So we can just maybe test for in the future. But it's good that they you know caught it uh, for us. But yeah. So is this a is this a fix on the Gaia side? Is does this imply another RC? It seems on the SDK side. At least the PR that is shared in the chat. Okay. Um Um Redphone says we're internally testing a fix now, hoping we can share that in the next day or two. So the my question is First, I assume from, again, I, I have to look farther into it, but I assume that it's state breaking. Is that true? By state breaking, I mean that we need a coordinated upgrade. So all the nodes need to have this code on, this fix on. Otherwise, we'll get the Apache error. Apache, Apache mismatch. Okay, I don't know exactly. It sounds to me like that's very likely the case, but uh, uh, you know, I don't know for sure. Because if that's the case, we cannot have. A, we need to have a coordinated upgrade, right? And one coordinated upgrade is upgrading to v fifteen, and of course, afterwards we can upgrade to v fifteen dot one or v sixteen. So the fact that v sixteen is with integration doesn't really matter. We can upgrade again. The issue is. Is the can is asteroid broken with V15 or it works but it doesn't work ideally? This is the thing that I so can we release V15 as it is and then patch it, or we should delay the release of V15? Uh my, my guess, and again, I don't really know anything about this, and I guess it's unfortunate. Thomas's mic doesn't work, but uh, it sounds to me like probably uh, it will break asteroids. Um, it, it sounds like probably it doesn't let them post the data they need to post, is what it sounds like to me, but I don't know. Yeah, looking through the code, the changes definitely stay breaking, and no, they can't work without it because this fails on basically unpacking the transaction message. So uh, if they have the interface, like a proto file that we could use, we could register it as an interface that we support. So the unmarshalling will go through. That's doable on Gaia. I'm not sure about the exact implementation detail. I'm looking at this for the first time. Or yeah, just go the Cosmos SDK route and merge it, merge it into our fork. But I don't know. To me, it seems that it would be safer to just include an interface on Gaia. Yeah, and, and Marius, when you had said what you said, uh, Redphone said correct. So, uh, so this means that clearly we do not want to upgrade the hub and break existing applications on it. So this is clearly not desired. That's the reason we have test nets. That's the reason we, yeah, we're checking all of these things. So. I guess the only reasonable thing to do here is to delay the, the release because whatever state breaking change we are adding, we'll need to upgrade the testnet again. Sorry, Alexa. Um, we'll go again to RC9, um, but I do not see any other way. So you are saying that you can have a fix in the next day or two. So by the end of the week, which would be ideal if we can get uh, uh, to get the fix and have a, a release candidate by Monday so that we can upgrade the testnet again on 
on next Wednesday. And maybe then yeah. you can even skip upgrading to RC2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if that's our expectation, we would cancel our, our RC2 upgrade. Not uh, overload the, the testnet participants with two. Yeah, so. we've had them here three days, three days in a row if we go tomorrow. So I would love to give them a break. So I think it's the best thing. Let's uh, then skip the RC2 for tomorrow. Matia? Yeah, I have a question about how this works. So I'm looking at the code. If anybody can answer it really quickly. So I'm looking at the code and how it does unpacking is it's unmarshalling the unpack extension option into an empty interface, which basically means just like unpack it the best you can, which basically means that you can cast it into whatever you like. So you can you can have it as a key value store, just bytes or whatever. So can somebody let me know or write in some channels why that's actually not an option or maybe describe how it actually failed? Because what I see, like it's trying to unpack it into a basically an any type. So anything should work. It doesn't matter what's inside. So given that uh, neither Thomas nor, uh, nor Red found can uh, can have that mic can participate in this conversation. Let's try to continue this conversation on uh, on Telegram. So Jehan, you are saying that you are in contact with both of them on Telegram, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I can I can connect you guys on Telegram. Um, exactly. Yeah. Hey, uh, Red Phone. I guess answering the in the chat, but we use Slack internally, um, and so. Probably, if you guys use Slack, we can connect them. But if not, Telegram is fine, too. Um, hey, we can so also okay. have a follow-up uh, call on Google Meet. Uh, but okay. let's start first to synchronize on uh, Telegram to get uh, more information on this. Try to assess in the end if... Uh, and we can try to do this by tomorrow. Uh, yeah, by tomorrow afternoon. So more or less the same time as now. Uh, to assess whether we need to add to change something or we can make it work without having a state breaking fix. Uh, if we need a state breaking fix, then let's try to do the fix and then we delay the, the RC2 upgrade and we jump directly to RC3, which will contain the fix. Sounds good? Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, great. We'll uh, circle back on any action items and uh, get this posted to YouTube. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.